welcome to Go on the Run. And thanks for staying with me. Um, I sort of have my computer in a place where I can start recording. It's not still quite there, but I'm going to put all that aside. You already know enough about that, so let's just jump in. So in this video, I like to talk about protocol authorization and authentication. Now, I'm calling this protocol auth just to leave it there and you can decide what it is that you're doing authentication or authorization. And if you're not quite sure about the difference, don't worry. In the very next section, we're going to be talking about security and we're going to clarify, if you don't know yet, the difference between authentication and authorization. Anyway, let's jump in. We have a lot ahead of us and I'm going to try and make this as efficient as possible and not waste your time, but also not rush through it so that you don't learn anything. The purpose here is to learn, so let's do this. So in our previous video, we look at how to secure our channel of communication. That simply means make it so that the client or gRPC client and gRPC can send data, exchange data, the calls that they make, the data they send for the call, the request, that information is secure so that nobody could spy on it. And we did that by using a certificate. We did a TLS um, certificate. We created one. It was self-signed and we secured the channel, which means every call that went over the channel was secure. However, we might still want to go a step further. You might be exposing a service. And in our case, oh, we actually have several services that we're exposing. And so you might be exposing a service that needs some security. So for example, if you look at the set of services we have, we have two so far. We have a MAT service that in that exposes several RPC methods. We have add method, subtract, multiply, divide, and then this modulus operation. We also have another data service that exposes two RPCs, creating random numbers and summing up a set of numbers. And if you look at what type of methods and RPC those are, you can see that the one in the MAT service are not stream. Um, they don't stream data to the client from the server or the um, client doesn't stream data to the server nor the service stream data back to the client. In our data service, we have some streaming RPCs and random, for example, is one where the server will stream back a random set of number to the client. And in the case of the client, for some, it streams a set of number to the server, and at the end of that, the server sums it up and says, oh, this is the total for those number you sent me. But none of our um, RPCs for the two services, math or data, have any sort of security on them. Now, you might be confused why I have level one and level two. And what I'm gonna try and demonstrate for you is that we can have a way of securing everything, have every method call be, provide some information when it's called, but then you can do something additional where you can send even more information for on some methods where some of them can send additional information. So what I want to demonstrate, the way I'm going to demonstrate this is I'm going to use our math service as an example and say that every call that is made by the math service must send some piece of information with it so that we can say, yes, this, um, this call can be made by the client. And then we're going to up it a little bit by saying, you know what, for the mod service, not only should it have this first level of authorization or authentication, again, it's just data, it's just metadata. However you choose to choose the treat it, that's your problem. And so we're gonna say that we can send a second piece of data only for the mod sir, um, RPC call. Now, everything that we we're going to be doing for our, you know, non-streaming RPCs, we can do for the streaming one. We just have to write the appropriate um, piece of code. It, we're going to see it though it's going to be called an interceptor, but it doesn't really matter once you understand it for the unary call. Remember, unary call are the ones that are going to be, I make a call to the server and that's it, one complete thing. Streaming calls are sorely different, right? You know, you make a call, but then there's this seems to be this repeated thing that happened um, where you repeatedly have, to, repeatedly have to send data and or consume data. So it's not just one a one-time thing. And so that that securing that is slightly different, but it's not much different. And so once you understand unary is the easiest one, you can do streaming. But we're gonna only cover unary. 
Okay, so let's get to our command line and our Visual Studio Code Editor. So, okay, so here I am at my command line and we're doing go on the run. And as you can see, we're um, still doing gRPC. So let's go to section 23. And we left off at chapter um, um, part five. Part four, we look at securing the channel. Part five, we were just sort of playing around and demonstrating that how we can use C++ to do um, proto buffer maps. So I think the place then that we want to start is with the code that we left off in um, part four. So let's call this part six then, and we'll start up our Visual Studio Code editor for part six. So let's do that. Um, I'll still work from the command line here. So let me go to part six and uh, let's see what's in this directory. So we have some exercises. So I think what we can do then is get rid of exercise one and two because that has nothing to do with our really gRPC. That just um, was used as a foundation to show us how to do HTLS security. And so let's call this exercise one. Okay, so we're starting off here with no um, you know, call security, but we do have channel security. And let's just do a quick review of this. And so from the um, client side, we see it all we get new TLS um, from file and that was a certificate. And this returns a dial option, which we are able to append to our set of options. And then we'd call the server. Okay, good. Now we want to add to the server. Again, if we think about what we want to secure, we want to secure all our method from the mat service, all these services, all these RPs, um, these methods should be secure. For now, we're gonna try and keep it simple and then work our way up. If you think about what we want to do is to add some extra information so that when someone calls this mod method, for example, that we can check that how they're supposed to call it. And so one way of doing that is to say, is there a way that within this method mod, we can check and see who called it, did they call it with the right information for us to validate or verify who they are, right? And so we know that though that's not gonna be on the parameter for in here because this is our mat request. This is just a basic structure that doesn't have anything other than the information we need to um, retrieve the operands and return um, and for the request and then we create a result a response from that so if there's anything that we can get it must be in the context now when we cover context we show that how or we discuss that how you can add values to context and so you can take a context create a new context which has some value that you can pass along we didn't spend much time on it but this is one place in which um, grpc uses context to add information to that from the client so that the server can get it. And so without further ado, let's do this. So we come over to the gRPC documentation and we go to docs and guides, which we've been to before and you click on authentication. It tell you so about what we've already discussed, which is the two types of credential we can have, channel credential and call credential. And today we're working with call credential. Now you can try looking through um, the rest of this for example of what we might be doing, but it's actually better if you go back and you should certainly read all of that if you haven't yet, you should have when we recover um, channel credential. But if you go back here and you read about um, the unary RPC, which I said there's un there are unary calls and then there are the streaming calls we already discussed that oh, we have unary call for a math operation and the data service has um, streaming calls. So let's read this section again. First, let's look at the simplest type of RPC where the client sends a single request and gets back a single response. So that's your unary call, right? Once the client calls a method on the stub, that slash client object, the server is notified that the RPC has been invoked with the client's metadata for this call. The method name and the specified deadline if applicable. Now, since we're using context, we know that our deadline 
is available, we can specify that. And like I said, we can add data to that context using values. So if we click on metadata now, we can see metadata is information about a particular call, such as authentication detail in the form of a list of key value pair, where the keys are strings and the values are typically strings. So this is what we want to do. We want to affect the metadata of the call. Now we can use it for authentication or authorization or anything else, but it basically is just extra information about the call that we're going to make. And so if we click on authentication detail, then of course it brings us back to this part which we already know. But what we know now is that what we really need to be able to do is create metadata for our um, call. The question is, where should we start first? Should we start by adding some metadata to on the client side when we make a call, for example, here we call using our mat service and here's the mod method, for example. What if we wanted to append some data to this call um, because we're doing port call. So if we are going to add some data, it should probably be here when we just want to do something specific for the mod method. And so one of the things that we can do is create some metadata to send along with this call. And the metadata comes from the gRPC metadata package. And in order to use it, what we can do is we can say, let's say create metadata for mod call. Let's just say that. And so I said that package is called metadata. And if we do like this, uh, we're gonna get, be given the op um, option of importing that metadata package and it's not from cloud.google but rather from grpc so we can do that and if we look at the functions that are available to us that we can call um, the one i'm interested in so there's this type call metadata which is a map of string to slice of string but i'm looking at this function here that says pair returns a metadata formatted by the mapping of the key and value pairs and you know, it panics if key and value pair is out or whatever. But basically, um, it just allows you to create a metadata object and provide a key value pair. So for example, we can say we want to pass key one with you know value one, and then um, key two, for example, um, with value two. So we can do something like this. And this is going to create a new metadata pair, um, new metadata for us with these key and value pair. So what exactly do we want to send to the server for the mod method? Now, if you remember what we want to do, we want to add a second layer of protection for the mod method only. Now we didn't do the first level because the first level is in putting a protocol for each of the other ones. But that seemed to be more work than doing it for one. So let's do it for one first, and then we can see how to add it for the rest. So let's just say for the mod method, we want to be able to provide a extra set of metadata, and let's just call it, let's put that in its own package so we can reuse it. So we'll click here and click AUTS to create an auth package, and let's create a file. And this allows us to share information between our client and server. So we can call it auth.go. And then we'll just say package auth. And let's create some constant. And let's call this um, method, you know, let's see, method key um, one. And this is for, let's call it my secret key one. And let's call it method value one equal some very secure um, data, right? And this is what I want my mod function to be able to provide each time it's called. So what I should do then is I should do all that and then pass the key and value. So the key and value I want to use is from our own package. So I'll go up here and I'll import our package, which is MMS slash AUTH. If you remember, MMS is the name of 
our module and there it is and so i'll import mms.auth which is our authentication package and if i go back down to the bottom here um i'll just say uh, where is it mms.auth that and i should be able to get access to my key and my value and so my computer is a little bit slow um and there we go my value so i have now created this metadata um md so now that i have this what can i do with it so let's call this metadata and let's save it now this still doesn't allow me to so how do I pass this to this method? Because this is the only method I want to have this extra information of this method, this key and value pair. Now I cannot put it on in. In is specifically a, um, a math request. So I cannot put it on that. So I need to find something else that I can attach it to. And so um, we need to somehow create a context with a value. And so we can certainly create a new context and say context is equals to, you know, context that, um, context with value, with value or something like that, um, like this guy, and give it the parent context and then give it um, the value we want. Now, the value we want to pass is um, MDD. But we'll also have to find a key for this value that we want to specify. Or we could have used the key that we have here, but then that's not the recommended way to do it. Fortunately, the meta package also um, provides us a way to create a new context using the metadata. So for example, if we come here and we scroll down, we can see from incoming context and we can retrieve the metadata or we can see from outgoing context, um, retrieve the metadata. Or we can say um, from outgoing context, uh, let's see, no, no, new context, new context. And that gives us a new context and the metadata provide new context. And that's a new incoming context. Or we can do new outgoing context. And let's see the difference here. New outgoing context creates a new context with outgoing metadata attached. If used in conjunction with append to outgoing context or new outgoing context will override any previous append data. So this seemed like what we want to use. So we'll say new outgoing context. Why outgoing? Because we're making the call to, um, to the server. We haven't made it yet. So this is certainly an outgoing context. And there's our metadata. And so now we've created a new context with this metadata set of key pairs. Now in our example, we only have one key pair, but that's okay. And now when we make this call, the call to our server has this new context that carry the metadata. Hopefully that makes sense. We, all we did was added two lines in order to send some information. Um, me putting this in a separate file and all this other stuff is just key value pairs. So now that we, our mod method has some extra information, we want to be able to verify that or use it on the server. So on the server, if we go to the mod method, because this is the place where this information is going to be provided, it's not going to be available in on any of the other methods, right? We can verify that. But what we can do is we can then say, well, how do we get access to this information? And so we just saw that when you use the metadata, package that it had something that says from in common context and that's exactly what we want to use so we can save that and from in common context and if we click that and um, we specify the context that we are provided that's in common this is what is being called provided to the mod call and so on the server side we still want to do all the check to make sure to things at that nil and all this other stuff. But now that we've done all that, we can say from this context, we want to get the metadata. So that was MD, if you remember. So I'm going to save this. But basically, if we go and we hover over this, you can see that we provide a context and we can get the metadata. Oh, and whether it's okay or not. So we can do okay. So we can check to see 
if we're able to retrieve this information. Now, if we intend to secure this method, I would say that oh, we absolutely should um, say that oh, if we cannot get the metadata, then somehow this call fails. And so what we can do is say, if not okay, then we can log like printf, for example, that the mod call, we had no metadata. So no metadata provided. All right. And while we're logging that, we should probably just return. And so we can say like return nil, and then maybe something like, um, let's grab this, pull it down, and then let's put it to the end here. Empty that error f, so something like that, right? So now we return why this call fail because we're if we intend to secure our mod function um, RPC. If we cannot get metadata to see if who is calling it or whatever, or verify the extra information that we the client is supposed to send, then we should not proceed. Okay. So now all that's left is for us to use the metadata. So since we don't know quite what it is, now I, I sort of hinted that metadata was, well, we sort of see what it looked like. It was a map with key value pairs. So we can go here actually and open up this documentation and we can see that from metadata uses this MD. And if we click on MD, we can see is a type defined. Um, where is it? Type defined MD is just a map of strings to slice of strings. So since it's a map, we can loop over it. And so we can sort of print out um, the length of it. So let's just say metadata. So this is the mod call, for example, metadata length. And what was that? Um, let's do, well, let's use log. So we don't have to do new line. And so the length of it is actually MD has some methods attached to it to help us to use it. And one of them is linked. And so we can call this to get how much, how many key values are in that metadata. And the other thing we can do is just sort of loop over it. So we can do key value equals to range over this metadata, and we can just print it out. And so this now allows us to see what information was sent. Now we haven't authorized anything just yet, but at least we can see it. So with this simple change, basically on the server, we're pulling out the metadata that's attached to the context, printing it out. On the client, we're simply adding some metadata to the call. And what we want to do now is see if that even works to have our client. And so go build client. And then above here, I'll go to the server and I'll say go build server. And so long that build correctly, we can run the server. And then now let's run our client. And so we can see that what we got back when the mod method was called was we saw that we see that there are four things there. Now here's our key and the value. And notice how that's a slice of string. That's how you see the second array. So there's some information there that we didn't put in that you're going to be able to always get. But the important thing is that there's our information that we can recover. So what this tells us now is that we can go ahead and make a check to ensure that if this method is being called or mod method is being called that it has the information that we expect. So let's close this. Now that we have that done packed, we can move a little bit faster. Let's do exercise two now. And so this is where we're going to say, well, on the server side, at least, because we know we already know that we will put in that information there on the client on the server side. Let's, um, let's now check. Um, the validate verify the information. Now we can certainly put the check. Now that we know how we get in this metadata and the values, we can certainly check it here and return. But then, if we were to do that and later on decide that you know what, um, the mod function is not or RPC is not the only one I want to verify with some extra metadata, um, but maybe some other functions too. 
then we'll have to do this check all over again. So for that reason, I'm going to cut this out, right? So I'm gonna cut out these lines, but what we'll do with the, the lines of code we cut out is we're gonna come at the bottom here and say, authorize is some function that takes a context, ctx, context that context, and return Boolean and maybe an error message. And so we can come here and we can say, well, given this context, get the metadata from the context. If we cannot get it, then return, um, you know, false in this case and the error. Um, if we can get that information, then we should try and see if it is this, uh, what we're looking for. So we can say, for example, um, the tokens we're looking for, uh, whatever name you want to give it, is equals to metadata that, and we saw how there were some methods on there. One of them was linked, but this one is get. And so it can it allow us to get the key that we want. And so we want auth that, and the specific key we're looking for is, let's see, um, from here, and we're looking for method key one. That's what we're looking for. And so this returns, get returned a slice of string. So we don't know if the set of values for this key are there. So we should certainly check and see if length of tokens is greater than one, right? Or, you know, if it's equals to, if it's equals to zero, for example, if length of tokens is equals to zero, it means that our, this call is certainly not authorized because the key we're looking for is not even there, much as the value. So at that point, we can certainly return that our, um, this method is not authorized, right? So this, at this point, is not no metadata, but really no auth information provided. All right, so we can return that error message. Now, if it is not empty, now we can check and see if the tokens, right, contains the value we want. Now, for what we're doing, we don't have to look over the list of tokens because it's only supposed to be one, which is supposed to be the first one, and it should be the value that we want, which is what that method value. So it should be this, right? Now, if we know how we're using the same key and multiple value, then we, of course, we have to iterate over that to make sure that the one that we want is in there. Right now, we only use in one value. So there we go. And so if that is true, if this is true, then, um, you know, we can simply um, return true and nil for no error, which means that so this call is authenticated. Whoever made this call. Now, the other thing we can do is right now we have hard coded this for the mod call, but like the reason for putting in a function is because we're saying that oh, anyone else can, anyone can call this. Maybe we can extend this. So we should probably provide the method name here that's making the call. So method string, and then just use that um, here so that uh, we have some more information, but we're not tied to just using um, that one thing alone. So let me do it this way. And so we do comma um, method. All right. So, all right. So that works except for here. I need to do this. All right. So now we've just made a function that does the check and because we we can use it for multiple functions well for rpcs we when we check in we want to pass in that function name so that rpc name so we can see what it is and that's it oh well if that's good if it's um passes but if it's authorized but if it's not authorized well then we can just return something like this and say that oh it not authorized all right so this claim is not um you know, no authentication information provided, but it's just not authorized or not authenticated. No auth. Or if I said not. Uh -uh. Authenticated or authorized. 
not right if I can spell. All right, so that is how we can simply do our test. And now, if we scroll back here to our mod call, our mod call then is going to pass in the context and say, oh, I'm the mod function that's being tested. And we can check and see if it's okay to be authorized or the error. And then we can do that call and also check and say, if not okay, then we should return um, okay, which is gonna be false, or rather we should return no, sorry. And then the error message. So there we go. And so this allow us now to get pretty much the same thing we had before. Now, what did I call that function? I think I just call it authorize. Yeah, I think I just call it authorize. So if we save that, and this is just work we did on the server side to clean things up. Um, da, 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 what is this now complaining about? Undefined authorize. Uh, did I spell that correctly down the bottom? Probably not, obviously. All right, so now let's save. Everything is good. Let's kill everything here. Go up a few places to example two server. And then our client didn't change. So um, for now we can use the same client. And so let's do go build our server. And then let's do server, run that. And then from the client side, if we run this, we should see that our method length, okay, well, um, this is da -da 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 -da, log printf. Oh, I think I have too many here. So I should have seen that warning. Let's kill this, rebuild just to be safe. And server, and it's listening. And we should see when we make a call, we should, everything else should still work because the only method that we're testing is that odd method. And basically everything else works successfully. We didn't have any problems getting metadata, so we don't see a message for that. And we, this is the only message we see. At this point, since we're you know, calling it outside of this function and we know how that works, we can take that out. And so the fact that we do not have an error for the, method, um, for the mod method tells us that's how we can call it. Now we can verify that we are able to call it by doing this, going up to um, two exercise two client, and then what we can do for exercise two client. So let's close this off and make sure we're using the right thing. So client, we can go to the client and we can comment out the piece of metadata that we added to the mod call. So here it is. This is the extra information. Let's comment that out. Let's save. Let's rebuild our client. And let's try calling our server now. And we'll see that the mod call failed because no authentication information provided. And as we know from the work we did just now is that it didn't fail here because there was three other pieces of metadata. So it was able to get metadata. It didn't get the key value period it was looking for. So no auth information provided. Okay, so now we have verified that oh, we can authenticate our method. Let's put back this now for our client. 